It's fun. It's wild. It's Dad's Gone Crypto. Welcome everybody to Dan's Gone Crypto and uh, we have another exciting episode and we're talking about understanding a project. So you've heard via a friend about this latest greatest project but do you just go and throw money at it in black and red or you do a little bit of research. So today's episode we're going to focus on just some basics on what does it mean to do a little bit of a homework, D-Y-O-R, do your own research. And this means that you've got to just follow a step-by-step -step process just to kind of get a feel. And you will immediately feel if the project seems a little suspicious, if it seems a bit weird. If it seems a bit weird, dig, dig deeper, very simple. Uh, but before we get on to that, uh, Ryan, how's your week been? Busy week. Uh, every week seems to be busier and busier these days. <laughs> so, seems to be accelerating uh, faster, closer to the end of the year. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, I mean, in general, good times. Hey, it's it's uh, it's my birthday tomorrow, so uh, I'll Ooh. be uh, having some fun with the family party, tomorrow. Party, party, party. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thanks for the invite. Eh? Yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, if you want to come out here to America, you are welcome. <laughs> It's it's the bear market next birthday. All right, excellent. <laughs> the private jet will be waiting. <laughs> Just excellent. make sure the jet skis are fully charged uh, on the yacht. <laughs> one day, one day. Uh, what about you? Anything exciting going on? Yeah, also just uh, pushing hard and uh, yeah, head down, gum guard in. Another week, uh, you can sound, my nose sounds a bit better than last week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's nice to have a bit of normality again and energy levels. So, um, yeah, just, uh, just pushing, just pushing. Uh, exciting, exciting times ahead. So, yeah, just uh, one step at a time. All right, guys. So the question is, all right, You've got this project. Now, I know you guys know about our favorite project. It's World Mobile. <laughs> we're using it <laughs> as just an example because we know quite a bit about it because we've done, we've done a few years of research on it. So that you know, gives us the ability to chat about it. Uh, we're not experts in it, but we, we understand it better. So for the purpose of this understanding, we can just relate to it a lot easier. And also, as far as what we're trying to demonstrate, they tick all the boxes. We did do it with another new AI project. Um, it didn't work so well, and we, we didn't want to put a, the project on in case, you know, it didn't seem, it didn't seem too legit, and we, we're prematurely, you know, uh, you know, fudding the project. So we decided, oh, let's, let's just explain the project, uh, let's explain the framework, and then we'll unravel it. The, the purpose of this is we're experimenting with, you know, looking for some new gems possibly, researching some new projects. Uh, we're not yet to say, hey, go buy this. We say, hey, let's do this research together as dads, all right? And then we set you on a little platform and then you go do some deep diving, all right? Further than what we've got, but we're gonna start with this. So where do we begin? All right, first and foremost, your, your bestie says, hey, crypto dad, Sean, I've got this gem. Because the gym is going to be a thousand X. Woo! <laughs> so you go sell the, the house, the wife, the car, and go put it on <laughs> black or red, and you hope. <laughs> no, no, you don't do that. All right. <laughs> you, you do your homework. So, first and foremost, what about just going to the website, right? So, type in the website and see what the website's about. Um, I'm going to share my screen. So, I'm just going to go over here. All right, guys. So, worldmobiletoken.com. All right, we go to their website. We're having a look at their website, right? We're trying to see, was it done by a cousin's friend <laughs> or was it professionally done? And first off the bat, it actually looks quite impressive. All right, uh, global TVL, number of volts, uh, token holders. There's 24,000 token holders. That's an important stat. That means there's 24,000 wallets. Uh, so that's a pretty sizable number. Max supply is 2 billion. Okay, cool. Uh, let's have a look here. Quite impressive. Graphics looks amazing. Um, site is nice and responsive. Tells you a bit about the, it's well laid out. Okay, create a vault. That's where you can do earth nodes, staking, ether nodes. Cool. Uh, as featured on these sites over here. 
Uh, let's just click on CNN. Let's see what they say over here. Okay, so now there's credibility. Uh, it is uh, edition.cnn.com tells you about the blimp and uh, radio frequency that goes up to 70 to 100 kilometers frequency range, I think. Yeah. All right, so that's pretty cool. So the website, so any one of these, Bloomberg, that's a decent, credible website. Let's see what they have to say. And these guys obviously vet the projects to some degree as well. Um, World Mobile beats Africa, where uh, bets on Africa, where Alphabet loons, balloons. Okay, cool. And you've got a paid subscription there. All right, okay, so website, pretty cool. All right, there's some some credibility points over here. Uh, is it? Do we still go invest in it? We'd, well, not quite. We just need to still find out a bit more. These are the exchanges that it's on. KuCoin, um, Sunday Swap, uh, Mex, C, Bitmart. Okay, so not not the main ones like Binance and all that, but I'm sure in the future, um, your partners. Okay, cool. Mercedes Finance. Okay, some decent stuff over here. So pretty decent when it comes to the website um, and informative as well. Uh, let's just check their merch store. <laughs> go get some World Mobile merch. Yeah, go buy some <laughs> World Mobile merch. There we go. Beautiful caps, mugs. All right, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any site that's merch is legit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if don't, the site wait, is Don't a take that yeah. advice. Just because they have merch does not mean they're legit. <laughs> I was joking, I was joking. <laughs> All right, so I found this site called Scam Advisor. Uh, so you just type in World Mobile Token over here. You do a little search, you can put in any site, and it gives you more or less a trust score. The nice thing about this site, I could have done a who is, just to see the back end of the website, to see if, um, you know, when was it published, when was it set up, where, where is it done. Now they've got a privacy, privacy, privacy setting on here. Um, but some of the things we like to look at, SSL security, that's cool. Um, the website um, has existed for quite some years. That's very important. <laughs> it's not a, it wasn't registered last week. Uh, flash start, did not find any malware or phising activities. Okay, that's pretty cool. What did it say about um, the negative there? I, I didn't see it. The negative, the website owner is hiding his identity on who is right. using a paid service. service. Which, honestly, I don't know how big of a negative that is. I think most website owners do that anymore. Um, it's pretty <laughs> pretty standard to hide your who is information. But. Yeah. Alexa ranking, okay, that's not so great, <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> they will be up there soon. All right, and this is all redacted information, obviously. Um, it's the company that they registered it from, so it won't have their personal details. But generally, you'll have all their personal details, all their company details in that regard. Okay, so, so far, it's not looking too bad. All right, guys, so the next step is obviously to find out about teams, all right, who's part of the team, what's happening with the team, um, and a good site to go to, of course, is LinkedIn. All right, Ryan, uh, we're on the LinkedIn site over here. What do you see? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, obviously you want to, I mean, an, another place you can do it too for teams, you know, you can check out their website and see who they're listing as team members. A lot of times, you know, I start there and then I'll come into LinkedIn, um, whether they're, if they have a group like this. So like World, World Mobile has its own LinkedIn, which then is going to link to all of its team members. And that's a good sign as well. I, I like to see that when I'm researching a project. So as you're going through the, as you're scrolling through here, um, you can see you know, the averages of, of where they studied, you know, you can, you can just see some background information of the entire team. So, yeah. So, I mean, this is going to show basically what you're seeing there. It says that they've got 88 employees. Um, and you can kind of see in general what those employees are all about. Uh, you can see where the employees live. Uh, again, in general, it's showing, you know, 22 of them there are from the United Kingdom. Uh, and then next to that, you see where they studied. So you can see, you know, where a lot of the employees went to school, um, uh, what they studied. If you scroll over a little more, you'll continue to see, you know, what they do. What are they, what are they doing within there, uh, within the company? Um, what are their skills? Um, you know, it's, it's basically just kind of a, that's a general representation of the company. And then of course, then you come down to the people you may know, and it's going to show, um, some of their team members and, um, 
uh, all their different stats and you can actually click on them and, and either message a team member or you can actually uh, go visit their profile. I don't know if you want to grab a team member and go check out his profile mm. or. Let's just page down. Yeah. I want to go to, uh, there's Mickey Watson. He's the founder, owner and founder of uh, Mickey. Uh, it's still pending. Please accept my request. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so James Tag, uh, let's follow him. Let's click on him. Let's see what he's up to. Social stalking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what I've picked up with James Tag is inventor and engineer. Uh, and the nice thing is you can actually get into detail with each of these guys um, and, and what they achieved. So I'm a technology entrepreneur, inventor, and author working in the field of communications, man-machine interfaces, and artificial intelligence. I founded Moonstone, which uh, developed the first zone um, capacity touchscreens, and Truephone, uh, the first uh, converged voice over IP GSM carrier. In 2015, I published the book, um, Are the Androids Dreaming Yet? Uh, on our attempts to emulate the human brain using digital computers. <laughs> so just that little, that little about, you know, already makes this one guy very interesting. Right. Um, and also he's the chief architect. Right. Yeah, it's very cool. LinkedIn gives you a lot of information and you can kind of back check and you can see if these, you know, you can, you can make sure that these are true profiles. Again, World Mobile is a big company. We know it well. So obviously, you know, we, we're not trying to deep dive into these individuals. But if you're looking at a new project and you're not really sure about them, you can do a little deep dive into the individual team members like this uh, and go see who they're following and who's following them. And, you know, you can just you can kind of get a, a, a lot of uh, background information on each one and and the jobs that they've held in the past and that kind of thing. So yeah. I, I think it's a it's yeah. a great research tool uh, for yeah. what we're doing there. And I think Ryan as well, it, it, the story has to make sense, right? So if this gentleman is the chief architect, he's building the architectural design for the entire future of World Mobile, right? He can't have come from McDonald's flipping <laughs> burgers <laughs> to, to dealing in diamonds and gold to maybe daytime trading to now being a chief architect, right? right. You see, the story, the story doesn't make sense. So if you look at his story, a partnership between uh, artificial and human intelligence, okay, he was the founder there, and then building the world's first quantum gravity computer, like what, okay? So uh, the story gets better, and then uh, let's go see his education, University of Cambridge, okay, some pedigree, <laughs> some pedigree. <laughs> so the story makes sense with, with, when you, you're viewing this. So you, you're trying to build this this idea in your head that, you know, are they led by, or by good people, right? Good, um, how can I say, uh, world-leading people in the space, right? Do they have the, the pedigree to pull such an ambitious, you know, um, you know venture or startup company? Um, this guy, he, I would back him, right? Just based on his right. pedigree, whatever he's going to be doing, I'm going to back him. If you go to Mickey and you, you go to all these guys and you see the pedigree that, that they've got, well, one of the guys built two telecommunication companies on two different continents, right? So this is what you look for to kind of still paint that picture. But we're still not certain. We still need to go. But LinkedIn plays an important role to see. And 88, yes, it's not 2,000 employees because we're dealing in the blockchain space. They don't want a lot of employees. They don't want 1,000 accountants trying to figure out you know, who owes what. They're using blockchain to solve these problems where they have less employees, but the they scalability into the millions all right, is possible. So this is, this is exciting over here. Absolutely. All right, and then let's just go back here. Uh, I don't think it was that one. What else was there? Uh, and you could deep dive, of course, into other guys as well. So that's LinkedIn. We're checking out the, uh, the who's working for the company. Now we the second, well, the other part is let's go to YouTube. All right, we type in World Mobile into the search engine. We pop up. We just have a look over here. 5,200 subscribers. Okay, that's pretty decent. Uh, I have not subscribed, my bad. Oh, wow. Um, you haven't even subscribed oh, to your favorite project. <laughs> geez, uh, shh, shh. 
No one will know. No one will know. <laughs> <laughs> then we want to see how decent are these videos. Are they premium quality um, or are they just made backdoor? And who's basically in these videos, right? So, um, so you can page down and kind of see who's covering the projects, who's talking about it, what's happening with the technology, and so forth. Okay, and then uh, you guys need to move on over to something called coingecko.com, all right? And this is a site that allows you just to find out more about World Mobile. So as you start typing in here, there's, it could be multiple World Mobile, World Coin, World States. You've got to make sure you get the right one. World Mobile, just double click on that. Ryan, would you mind just taking us through what you see and how to understand this? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, on CoinGecko, um, you know, CoinGecko is going to be one of the first probably that lists um, a lot of information about a project, uh, especially when they're new. Um, but you'll, you know, everybody will be on here. But it's uh, it, it's kind of a, it's just a world of information there. I mean, you can see, um, you know, you can see the contract, number one, for the token itself. So you can go take a look at the contract. Um, you can also see their website, you know, I mean, basically you just want to see that everything's here. Um, to be honest, a lot of times I start on CoinGecko when I'm first learning about a, trying to learn about a project because it gives me all of the information right there in front of me. Um, so I don't have to go out there trying to research where everything's at. I can click on CoinGecko, type in the name you know, find the token and I can get a lot of information here. I can get their socials. I can get their Twitter, you know, telegram, discord, uh, Instagram. So, um, I can see all that right here along with the website. So it is, it really is a really good starting point as well. Um, but you know, you obviously you can do this in any order that you're comfortable with. But, um, basically what we're really interested in here, because we've already now looked at the website, you know, we've done some research into the team. We've looked at their socials already. So basically what we're looking at, um, we want to see what their circulating supply is. We want to see what their total supply is. And then a little bit later, we're going to go in and do a little deeper dive into their tokenomics so we can see how that makes sense. But basically, you know, when I'm looking at total supply, okay, that tells me that the, the total they're ever going to have is 2 billion tokens. Um, having, you know, knowing that means that, you know, you're never going to be able to mint more tokens. 2 billion is going to be the max. And then I can see that, um, you know, Sean, what is the total, what's the current circulating supply they have out there? 430 million. Okay. So they have 430 million out of 2 billion tokens. So essentially they have, they have nearly 25% of their tokens are currently circulating. Uh, and again, that, that gives us some good information for now against, you know, to see where their price is at. And then we will go a little later and uh, dig into their tokenomics and see how long it's going to take for, to distribute all that. Um, in fact, we might even be able to see a little bit of that. If you scroll down a bit, we might be able to see some of that on here. Um, we've got the statistics for their pricing. Uh, gives us a chart and on that chart, you know, you can go through, you can do a daily chart, a weekly chart, you can go all the way out to a year, um, you know, and just kind of see a little bit uh, about how their price has moved over time. Uh, and then if you look at the price statistics listed over on the right side there, you know, you will see what their current price is. It'll show you the highs and lows. So this, this just gives you some information. Uh, it'll, it also gives you the volume information. So you can see how many people are out there actually trading this. Um, and, um, you know, if, if, if it has good volume. Yeah. So, so yeah. So while you're looking at the price statistics, you know, you can see what their all time high was. You can see what their all time low was. Um, you can kind of see if that corresponds to the bull market, bear market. A lot of times, um, if, especially a token that's been around a little while, um, you know, depending on where we're at in the market cycle could, could have a big, um, impact on that. But at the same time, if it's a fairly new token, then, you know, it doesn't have so much of an impact there. And you want to, um, you know, you want to kind of analyze those numbers a little bit. Um, I don't, if we scroll down, we can see, you know, it'll give us some information about the token, um, kind of what they're all about. And then at the bottom, you'll get into the token, uh, markets, which basically it's going to tell you everywhere that the tokens traded, um, from DEXs. And so basically decentralized exchanges and, um, and I, I see that they're, you know, they're on Sunday swap, they're a Cardano token. So Sunday swap is a Cardano uh, decentralized exchange. You can see their top one there, their top volume uh, exchange is KuCoin, uh, which is a, a large centralized exchange. Um, 
so, uh, I mean, basically looking at this, yeah, you know, you can see that this is a pretty well-established token. It's traded all over the place. Um, sometimes you'll you'll get onto here and you'll see a token that's maybe only traded on one, you know, de decentralized exchange or two decentralized exchanges. And it's just, it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad token. Um, it just means, you know, maybe they're new and you, you want to really do your research if, um, you know, if you're if you're not finding them all over the place like that. All right, and I think I clicked on Bitcoin Talk over here, uh, and it just popped up over here just to find out a bit more. We're going to go into the white paper shortly. Uh, just they were looking to unlock a trillion dollar telecommunications industry. And just to give you an idea, guys, you know, the whole thing about World Mobile is, you know, they're giving you an opportunity to invest as, as a partner in the development of a telecommunications, a decentralized telecommunications company. So think about any telecommunication company that you're sell, your mobile is currently on. Imagine if you bought you know, into that company when they first got going, where would you be today? <laughs> All right, probably driving a Lambo. So <laughs> you know, they're technically small, um, in the, they, they're massive in your country, but small. They tr World Mobile is trying to unlock the world's unconnected. So they're not looking to onboard 50 million users, they're looking to onboard you know, 500 million users over time, um, connecting people that just don't have access. So they're more ambitious um, than you know, your, your typical um, brick and mortar telecommunications company. This little bit of information here, yeah, the max supply is 2 billion, um, but the region, we're releasing 10% into circulating supply, 200 million. This is obviously an old document, now it's 400. The rest will be released over 20 years. Right, so that's very important, so they don't just dump all their 2 billion tokens onto the market. Um, in order for World Mobile to get to $1 on a 2 billion circulating supply, it's, that's what it means, it'll go to $1. Um, but if there's less in the market, the opportunity to get to $1 is a lot easier because they're releasing it slower. All right, so that's a bit of important information there. Um, and then, moving along to the white paper, Ryan, can you tell me what is a white paper? What is a light paper? Um, so a white paper is usually, um, it's going to give you the full background on the project. So um, it's usually all the verbiage. <laughs> so, you know, the white paper is usually going to be the long document. Um, sometimes it's going to be the boring document that uh, gets into the all the technicals, um, you know, all the technical details of the project. Um, I usually will probably not fully read a white paper when I'm when I'm going through a project. It depends what they have. If they have a light paper, I'm going to probably fully read the light paper, which is kind of the more condensed version um, of the white paper. Um, so usually I'll, I'll really dive deep into the light paper. And then if there's certain things that I want more detail on, I'll refer back to the white paper and see if I can find more detail there. Um, if if I'm not 100% convinced after the light paper, um, you know, I might go back and read the white paper or I might just say, ah, you know, this, this might not be for me. <laughs> so, um, yeah. again, the, the white paper is just kind of the, the long doc um, that's, that's going to give you everything. And not, not every token out there is going to have a white paper and a light paper. You know, sometimes, you know, sometimes they're going to have a white paper um, as their only documentation. Um, and it just depends what the token's all about. World Mobile token is a, you know, it's, it's a very tech heavy um, company. So, you know, they're going to, they have a fairly robust um, white paper um, that, that really, you know, I mean, you can see it there. It's, it's written in a very um, dictionary kind of way <laughs> where mm -hmm. a lot of the light papers, a lot of times are very graphic heavy and that kind of thing. So um, the, the light paper is definitely easier to get through, but um I've definitely I've I've read World Mobile's white paper and it's interesting if uh, you know if you're looking for something to <laughs> to uh, <laughs> take a little while and uh, really dive into. So yeah, so the white paper tells you exactly what they're trying to achieve, how they're trying to achieve it, and how it's going to affect. So um, by reading this, you'll understand that there's different levels in which you can get involved. You can get involved by buying a token and sitting on it and get rewarded just by staking it. Or you can opt for owning an Earth node where now it's a validator. So as the transactions happen on the ground level, I open my mobile app, I click I want to buy data, 
that little transaction that happens has to be validated, right? Um, and the Earth Node validates those in different countries. And there's a small percentage of money that goes back to the Earth Node operators. And they basically get incentivized for that validation uh, and also helping to secure the security of the network as well. Um, there is only 1,000 of those Earth Nodes. Uh, so it makes it very lucrative to own one. Um, so if you do own one of those, it's as the, the network expands into tens of thousands, into hundreds of thousands, into millions of users, you have to understand there's a lot of processing power that's needed to validate all those transactions, which means the rewards can be quite high. Then a tier above that would be the blimp, where it's, it's another form of allowing a wide area to get coverage up to 100 kilometers, 70 to 100 kilometers radius, um, and everything kind of mesh networks. You have this grid mesh network that happens on the on the uh, on the grid, the ground floor. You got your cloud services, which validates the nodes and the transactions and all of that. And then you got obviously the blimp, which obviously sends signal to it and gives it extra bit of coverage. But their backhaul also works with uh, Starlink and normal traditional fiber. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes to get you know, basically internet and cellular to, uh, to the household, which is quite exciting. And this paper starts that process of an understanding. And even, even though I've read it a couple of times, and even that there's so many new things that are happening uh, that you constantly have to just keep up to date with what's happening, what are they launching, what are they unraveling, um, just to keep up to date with the project. And that happens on a weekly basis by going to the Telegram channel um, and they're releasing new information. You're like, wow, okay, they just did this, that's interesting. Okay, so this is basically the white paper. Um, Ryan, if you don't mind, I'm going to just zoom this in. Explain this to me <laughs> and to our audience. So, all right, so, I mean, basically that's kind of their, uh, that, that's their distribution table. Um, so it's, it's part of their overall tokenomics. So we saw before when we were looking at CoinGecko that they have uh, total uh, tokens of two billion uh, is their total supply, and we also saw that their current supply uh, that's circulating is around four hundred and thirty million tokens, uh, roughly there, as you can see. Um, so basically, what we're looking at here is how the rest of those tokens are distributed. Um, I think if I remember what you know when we were just looking at it, it started with like a little over two hundred million tokens had been distributed. Um, and and that was right off the bat. Now we're at 400 and you know 30 million tokens. So this shows you how that's all distributed. Um, you can see their private sale, um, you know, 2.5 percent. And and this is going to be of their of the total uh, supply. So private sale was 2.5 percent of their total supply. Public sale was 10 percent. Incentives and rewards 3 percent. Early staking rewards, 2.5. So, you know, you're going down and basically when you, you, when you're looking at these distribution tables, you want to see how much is going, you know, into the company itself, how much is going, uh, to, to the team members and the founders, um, you know, uh, how much is going to reward users? Uh, as you can see there, the operators and staking, 29% uh, is going there. 18% uh, to the operations fund to basically, you know, fund the operations of the company. Um, so, you know, as far as a company like World Mobile goes, uh, you know, they were building for a long time to get to this point. So it's definitely not unusual at all to see the team, you know, getting 20% of the tokens and they're, you know, they're taking even a little less than that there at 19.25. Um, and it also, what the other important thing that it's showing you there is the uh, lockup and the, basically the vesting. So um, you're seeing that the co-founders and founders had an initial lockup of 18 months, um, which which basically means that means that they'd got zero tokens for 18 months, and then it's distributed over 24 months um, uh, linearly. So basically, that means that 19.25 percent of the tokens, ha after 18 months of being in existence, they were then. Uh, distributed once per month, um, basically that 19.25% divided by 24 and, and they got those once per month. So that just shows, and you can see the advisors as well. Um, 
so so basically that's showing where some of that extra you know the the other 200 million tokens that have been distributed some of it is there uh some of it's from the private sale that you can see had an initial lockup and then you know some of it's from the public sale that had no lockup incentive rewards early staking rewards so those were all paid out and that's that's where that number went from you know 200 million all the way to 430 million in its first couple of years here of existence uh, and again those are those are really important numbers um when you're researching when you're researching a project you want to look at that you want to look at their total tokenomics paper and um and really understand where all these tokens are going um and you know is the team taking 80 percent of the tokens or you know are they hiding it and saying okay the team's getting 10 percent of the tokens but uh the developer you know the developing fund and uh marketing fund is another 80 percent of the tokens so you know are, are they basically uh taking all the tokens and then there's going to be really nothing left to operate the company with so it's it's something to look at um and and you'll get you'll get good at reading them um one one good thing to do is to go back at really successful projects and look at this stuff go look at like world mobile i i consider to be a successful project it's it's new it's it's early but it is very successful for an early uh uh project so look at how their distribution works go back and look at um you know look at look at a lot of these you know look at uh i don't know just go back and look at cardano go back and look at Chainlink. go back and look at all their initial white papers and their and their distributions and go you know, do a little dive into that and get yourself familiar with what good tokenomics look like for really big projects. Uh, and you can do the same thing. Let's say you're looking at mid-tier projects, right? You're maybe not looking at those top top 20 projects. You're looking at stuff that's mid, mid-tier. mid Maybe it's a, you know, rank two or 300 on CoinGecko. Um, when you're looking at those, kind of compare them to each other, right? See where they're at, and um, and then it'll give you kind of an idea of of what to look for in those kind of things. And you don't really have to be like a an economics or a tokenomics expert to really understand this stuff. If if you really go in there and and see what the ones that have been successful have done, and see if the one that you're researching is somewhat close to that. Definitely, and you'll see that these numbers that the founders and co-founders all right, we're not worried about having a later lockup because they've, they've invested in the project. You know, they've, they've obviously built the project or started building a project years before. Then they came to the market where they released this potential you know, asset into the market, but they were still happy to wait for their token. So even though they think, oh, just out the bat, the token's going to fly, I'm going to make all the millions and then I'm going to retire. They didn't have this idea. They had this idea that we're in this for the long haul, right? So, and yes, the price came down, but that's fine. You know, when you start to see stuff like this, it means that the, the, the advisors and co-founders and even the private sale are in it for the long haul where the public was available on TGE, which is token generated events. So that when they basically launched, so they looked after the public. So that's a tick. Founders didn't eat first, that's a tick. Advisors didn't eat first, that's a very big tick, right? So you can start to see that this feels a lot better. If this was zero and everybody else had a lockup, and you'll be surprised how many projects <laughs> do that, run for the hills. <laughs> run for the hills. You know, and, and sometimes these, these project owners validate, well, oh, I've invested so much of my private money and I've invested so much time, at least six years of development, I should eat first. <laughs> like, okay, it's short sighted. Um, and the run for the hills, basically. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's just see what else is here. And this is just references. These guys are very data, they do things properly. All right, and uh, they can have reference to all the technologies and stuff they were talking about. So it's not just hearsay or some speculative idea. These guys have a massive pedigree in the telecommunications industry. All right, guys, so as you can see, white paper tells you more about the project. So you can start to get an understanding from the CoinGecko. Everything you need is right here. You click on your Instagram, your Telegram, your Twitter, your Reddit. If you click on Reddit, it'll go to the links. You can start reading what people say about it, right? Um, you can understand what's happening there, read the threads, all right? And if you're absolutely not sure about it, world mobile just uh, sorry uh, world mobile just type it into google right see what happens i've got my vpn on i think um, see what happens see what pops up first if the first word that says scam right 
then you know that there's a problem, right? So uh, here's an example. Our favorite guy, uh, Logan Paul. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, yeah, I want to know if CryptoZoo is a great project to invest in, <laughs> right? So I start reading here, uh, CryptoZoo investigating Logan Paul's biggest scam. You see, I just, <laughs> I didn't say anything. I just typed it in, right? <laughs> so how much is it worth? What's the tokens worth? Copyzilla on the reaction to Logan Paul the video. So now I've really got something that says, wait, I better dive deeper into this. All right. And now the word is scam. So now if I just add the word scam, let's see what happens here. OK. <laughs> all right. No refunds. You can start to see what I'm talking about just by Googling. Now, these might all be fake. We know it's not. But these might be all fake just based on, you know, FUD in the market and that. But when you read just says YouTuber Logan Paul's hits with class action lawsuits. OK. So now there's truth to it. Now, would I think about buying my friend's crypto zoo that he's trying to, his egg that he's trying to sell me? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> All right. You see where we're going with. So you can just use simple, let's just see, uh, uh, world mobile scam. Um, trading. Okay. So trading is a scam. That's probably in a country that has, doesn't do crypto. Um, 10 most common crypto currency scams. Nothing that's concrete. All right. So looking good. All right, guys, so the idea is to do your own research, right? And these are a step-by-step -step approach, right? Step-by-step -step approach is very simple. Check the website, right? Um, Google the name, see what pops up, just to get a feel for it. Check the socials. How many people are on Twitter? How many people are on YouTube? Do they have an Instagram account? Are you starting to get a nice vibe or are you starting to feel that it looks a bit scammy? All right? Check the YouTube channels. Are the videos quality? It is difficult to produce a quality video, right? And it costs a ton of money. And if there's multiple videos, okay, so cool. They've got some marketing spend and budget. Um, Telegram, these guys are, are world class when it comes to communication in the Telegram group. Just trust me, go in there and ask some questions. There will be, you know, 10 people willing to help you. Um, a very amazing community, right? And right. they built that from the ground up. Don't forget Discord uh, too. Discord's a big cool. one for, um, for NFT type projects and that kind of thing. Yeah. Discord, if you're a noob, just be careful. Right. <laughs> you can get lost in it. But yes, Discord's also quite a big one. Um, check out the teams, do a little deep dive, a little just scoping around their qualifications, their past experiences, their patents, um, and their, their succession to where they are now. And does it paint a picture? CoinGecko, um, as Ryan said, you know, he would start with this because it has all of that in there. I just took you the long way around. Uh, but inside, yeah, you can go to all these socials and the social proofing and this price history and market cap. There's a lot in here, right? When you can't find it, then of course you just go to their website and then on their website, they should have most of the stuff like the white paper and the light paper and the tokenomics and so forth. So this in a nutshell is the start of doing your own research, right? And not just taking someone's advice. And as you see here, we've put your coming more. So in the comments below guys, just tell us what else can we add to this list that we can vet a project um, I know Coin Bureau, a guy from Coin Bureau uses Mensari and Dune. Um, I had a look at those, they're a little bit technical in that, uh, and I think you need a, it's a subscription based. But what else can we basically put on this list to come up with a robust, tight list so that when we do our reviews um, on projects, we're ticking all these boxes for you guys um, and we're doing a little bit of a deep dive into it? Yeah, absolutely. All right, perfect, guys. And that leaves us with the most important time of the evening. The dad's got jokes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Ryan. Absolutely the most you important time. prepared a dad's joke? <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually, I forgot to grab them, but I'm, I'm ready. I can, I'm sure I can just come up with one from my children's <laughs> youth. So. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a proper dad, I'll tell you. <laughs> Me? I need to go Google dead jokes. <laughs> uh, all right, cool, guys. So, uh, Ryan, you're up. How the rules work, simply try not to laugh. <laughs> and if you do, all right, you get a point. And you, uh, if you laugh, if I laugh, then I have to drink a beer. 
and if you love, you have to drink a beer and so Excellent. forth. The joys of drinking beer. Excellent. I might just drink a beer anyway, Mazel. but sure. Oh, anyway. <laughs> we'll just drink a beer as well. <laughs> All right, right. What is your joke? Why didn't the skeleton go to the party? Because he had no uh-huh. body to dance with. <laughs> That's like it. No body. <laughs> your deliverance is getting better and better. <laughs> I'm an old dad. Like I've had it. a lot I of like experience. It. Of, of yeah, my, yeah. I've had a lot of experience of my kids rolling their eyes and shaking their heads at me. So. <laughs> Takes such pride in it. Right. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> All right, my joke. My wife asked me today if I've seen the dog ball. I said, no, I didn't know he could. You, that, I did that joke. <laughs> I did it? that joke on maybe uh, 10 episodes ago. My God. Really? That is, ten, that ten is, a, is a long time <laughs> That is a it's massive ancient. faux pas. It's one thing when our guests do it, but come on, man. <laughs> Was I on that show? I'm just saying. Was <laughs> you <I there>? were. <laughs> and I uh. think you laughed at it. <laughs> All right. That's Tomorrow all right. I'm Just dining now you got to drink a case of beer. So cheers. Yeah, a case of beer. No problem. <laughs> uh, oh, the good joys, times. The joys of dead jokes. <laughs> all right, Ryan, wrap us up today. So basically, guys, you know, we just wanted to break down how to research a project. Hopefully you got a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of value out of what we just put out here. And um, like Sean had said before, definitely put down in the comments, um, put down in the comments how we can, you know, improve. What what can we add to that list uh, so that we can all start doing a little better um, research of our new projects? And uh, we're definitely, we're going to start applying this list to um, a, a lot of new projects that are coming out and uh, maybe are, are out now. Um, just so we can start bringing you guys some new project reviews and, um, you know, help you guys, uh, make some good decisions, we hope. So, uh, we'll start doing that in the upcoming episodes, but, uh, between then and now, please don't forget to like, and subscribe if you had some fun today and, uh, we will see you guys next week. Cheers guys. Take care. The material and information presented in this recording are for entertainment purposes only. Do not misconstrue what you hear as investment or trading advice. Always do your own research. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed by the guests on this recording are their own and do not necessarily reflect those of Dad's Gone Crypto or its hosts.